Fall is just around the corner, and you know what that means. Busy schedules, back to school chaos, and the need for quick and delicious meals. But fear not, because I have the perfect solution to keep your taste buds happy and your tummy satisfied. Say hello to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. They're here to save the day, delivering delicious chef-crafted recipes right to your door. All you need to do is pick your recipes and delivery date, and voila, dinner is sorted. Now here's the best part. With HelloFresh, you never have to stress about meal planning or grocery shopping, and it's a huge relief during those busy weeknights. HelloFresh takes care of all of that for you so you can spend more time doing whatever it is that you love and their variety of 40 recipes each week will keep your taste buds very very happy plus they've got quick and easy options in just 15 minutes you can whip up a wholesome homemade meal right in your own kitchen perfect for those busy weeknights when you've got places to be they've also got you covered for quick breakfasts and lunches too back to school season can be a whirlwind but with HelloFresh you can ditch the grocery runs and save some cash it's 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than traditional grocery shopping so why wait any longer don't call for delivery when life gets busy. Get HelloFresh. It's the meal kit that's got your back. And guess what? Special offer for you. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 50BRAINFOOD at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That's right, 50% off plus free shipping. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 50BRAINFOOD at checkout. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring. And now today's video. At 2.46 p.m. on March 11, 2011, at a spot 60 kilometers off the coast of Japan, the Pacific tectonic plate suddenly slipped and plunged under the Eurasian plate. The resulting Tohoku earthquake, lasting six minutes and measuring nine on the moment magnitude scale, was the most powerful in Japanese history and the fourth largest ever recorded, causing thousands of deaths and injuries and inflicting trillions of yen in damage. But worse was yet to come. Ten minutes after the shaking finally ended, residents along Japan's northeast coast watched in horror as a wall of water 40 meters tall came roaring out of the sea towards them. The giant wave was even more destructive than the earthquake that preceded it, wiping away dozens of cities and towns and bringing the final death toll to 19,759. It also triggered the meltdown of three of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, creating a radiological disaster whose effects may take up to 30 years or more to clean up. Thanks to this and similar disaster in the Indian Ocean on December the 26, 2004, the Japanese word for monster waves became firmly planted in the world's vocabulary, tsunami. Many English speakers, however, still commonly refer to this phenomenon as a tidal wave. Yet the terms are not interchangeable, the latter referring to an entirely different type of hydraulic phenomenon, one that makes rivers run backwards and creates waves that can be surfed for dozens of kilometers. So. Grab your surfboard, perhaps, as we dive into the fascinating science and history of real tidal waves and how they differ from tsunamis. So, tidal waves are more probably known as tidal bores, a term derived from the Old Norse bara meaning wave or swell. Whereas tsunamis, Japanese for harbor wave, form in the open ocean and are caused by underwater geological displacements like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and landslides, tidal bores, true to their name, are caused by rapidly rising tides and form in narrow bays and rivers. Tidal bores are also significantly smaller than tsunamis, with the largest observed on the Tiantang River in Hangzhou in China, measuring 9 meters tall. Scientifically speaking, a tidal bore is a kind of hydraulic jump, a phenomenon whereby a fluid flow abruptly slows down and changes its elevation, exchanging part of its kinetic energy for potential energy. You've probably observed this phenomenon every time you turn on your kitchen sink. When the stream of water impacts the bottom of the sink, it flows outward in a thin layer. But just a few centimeters outward from this point of impact, this layer suddenly jumps upwards, forming a shallow circular ring. In the case of tidal bores, the jump and resulting wavefront are caused by a rapid change in water level in the river mouth. While the water level can change rapidly during both flood tide and ebb tide, tidal bores only form during flood tide. The most common type of tidal bore consists of a single wave front or roller flowing upstream against the river current. This breaker is usually very turbulent, churning up large amounts of sediment and air as it sweeps along. This turbulence, in turn, causes many bores to produce a loud, low-frequency roaring or rumbling sound that can be heard for many kilometers. However, a second, less violent type of bore, called an undular bore, is sometimes observed, consisting of a larger, smooth wave front, followed by multiple secondary waves called whelps. The conditions needed to create a tidal bore are very specific, meaning the phenomenon occurs in only around 60 places in the world. The river must be relatively shallow, its mouth narrowed, the estuary where it meets the ocean wide and flat, and the tidal range at the river mouth must be very large, on the order of 6 meters or more. Indeed, the largest tidal range in the world, 16 meters, occurs in the Bay of Fundy in Atlantic Canada, and many rivers in the region, including the Petticodiac, Salmon, and Shubenacadie, experience regular tidal bores twice a day. These large tides also cause certain rivers to temporarily flow backwards, a phenomenally famously observable at reversing falls popular tourist attraction on the St. John River in New Brunswick. However, there 
are rare examples to these rules. For example, perhaps the most famous tidal bore of all, the Pororoca, forms on the Amazon River, whose mouth is relatively large. However, this estuary is very shallow and dotted with numerous islands and sandbars, creating the same hydraulic effect as a narrow mouth. Indeed, the Pororoca is so powerful that, unlike most rivers its size, the Amazon doesn't have a delta, the white, triangular drainage plain that forms when a river slows near its mouth, causing sediment to build up and the river to break up into multiple shallow channels. Instead, the tidal surge carries the sediment down a single channel directly into the Atlantic Ocean. But while tides are irregular and predictable, this is not always the case with tidal bores. Some bores, like the so-called Benak on the Batang Lupar River in Malaysia, occur regularly every day. Others, like the Pororoka, occur only during the strongest spring tides. Many other factors can affect the formation of bores, including rainfall, wind, and shipping traffic. Indeed, large-scale human activity on a river can disrupt bore formation. For example, the River Seine in France used to experience a powerful 7-meter tidal bore called the Masquerade, but extensive dredging, canal construction, and other hydraulic engineering projects in the 19th century caused it to periodically disappear. Finally, dredging of the riverbed in 1963 eliminated the masquerade altogether. Similarly, the Petty Kodiak River in New Brunswick, Canada used to have the largest tidal bore in North America at 2 meters high. But the construction of a causeway between the cities of Moncton and Riverview in the 1960s caused the bore to disappear. In 2010, however, as part of the Petty Kodiak River restoration project, the causeway gates were reopened and the tidal bore returned. Despite being significantly less powerful than tsunamis, tidal bores can still be extremely dangerous. Reaching heights of up to 9 meters and speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour, tidal bores can capsize ships, destroy docks, and other riverside infrastructure and sweep people off riverbanks into the water. Indeed, prior to its elimination in the 1960s, the Seine River Bore, or Masquerade, had a particularly sinister reputation, destroying some 217 ships and damaging countless more between 1789 and 1850. Many bores, such as on Malaysia's Batang Lepar and in India's Huhi River, uh, are well-known navigation hazards for local shipping. While every year, the Tiantang River Bore in China carries off a handful of people who stand too close to the riverbank. Yet tidal bores can also be a valuable part of the local ecosystem, stirring up sediment and oxygenating water as they sweep along. They can also stun or kill large numbers of river animals, providing a bonanza for predators and scavengers. For example, piranha follow the Amazonian Pororoca to gather up fish, crabs, and birds. Sold crocodiles swim behind the Styx River Bore in Australia, while eagles and grizzly bears around Alaska's Cook Inlet will often gather after a tidal bore to pick up dead fish along the riverbank. Tidal bores can also be a popular tourist attraction, especially among rafters, kayakers, and surface. For example, certain regions, such as the Amazon, not only feature large, powerful bores, but also long, uninterrupted stretches of river, creating the unique conditions for long-distance endurance surfing. Indeed, since 1999, an annual championship has been held in the Brazilian municipality of Sao Domingos de Capim to see who can ride the infamous Pororoca the greatest distance. Currently, the record belongs to Brazilian surfer Picaruta Salazar, who in 2003 rode the tidal bore for 12.5 kilometers over 37 minutes. However, the absolute record for continuous surfing is held by California surfers Colin Whitbread and JJ Wessels, who in July 2014 rode the Petticodiac River Bore in New Brunswick, Canada for an incredible 29 kilometers from Bellevue Village to Moncton. The record-breaking ride took nearly two and a half hours and raised more than a few eyebrows, especially as Wessels recalls among customs agents at the Canadian-American border to quote, We pull up and the customs agents look at us like, what is on the top of your car? They then look at our passports and ask, where are you going? We're going to surf a river wave in Canada. Seriously, boys, what are you going to do? Don't lie to me. I'm telling you, we're going to surf this river wave. Yet before you grab your surfboard and set off at the Amazon or Canada, know that river surfing is not without its unique dangers. Not only are certain rivers like the Amazon full of dangerous wildlife like crocodiles and venomous snakes, but tidal bores often carry large amounts of debris, including entire trees, that can easily entangle and injure unwary surfers. Consequently, this is a sport only for the most experienced and YOLO personality types, which is always a bit of an ironic term, given the fact that you only live once could just as easily be used as a major reason not to do dangerous or foolish things despite most using it as motivation for such shenanigans in their life. Interesting. As ever, much like when on a surfboard, an optimal life is all about balance. The more you know.